It's like 108 degrees outside and I'm drinking coffee. I think this is the sign of an addiction. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, CIT 12, Computer Literacy at Fresno City College. Uh, this is week one, this is my week one video debrief. Um, what can I say, online classes are different. Uh, they are sometimes difficult just because it's hard to know what exactly you need to be doing. Um, it's easy to kind of get lost. It's easy to just not pay attention to things. And so every single week, there's gonna be a video just like this one that's made that week specific for you um, to tell you what you need to do for the week. Um, and so this is the first one. It's gonna be a little longer than most of the others just because uh, you're brand new. There's more to cover and I'm gonna kind of show you uh, where to find stuff here in the course. But every single week, uh, this should be your first stop uh, in our course. Check out the weekly debrief video, whatever week you decide to, uh, to do your work for the class, or whatever day of the week you decide to do your work for the class. Check out this video first. It'll give you all the information you need uh, in order to succeed that week. You'll find the main navigation on the left-hand side of Blackboard like you do for all your courses in Blackboard. Um, I try to simplify things as much as possible, streamline them so that you can always find what it is you need to be doing. Uh, the first link on the left is announcements. That just takes you to this page where you can see the weekly debrief videos as well as any other announcements I might make in the course, um, although those other announcements will probably be emailed to you. Um, then right below uh, announcements you're going to see the heart of the course, weekly content. When you click on that link you're going to see some folders. Um, those folders have weeks attached to them, so it'll be like week one, week five, week twelve, whatever week it happens to be. Um, that folder uh, is where all of the assignments you have to do for the week are stored. So if you click on it, uh, it'll tell you, hey, this is the reading you need to do this week. Here's a lecture video embedded straight from YouTube right there, um, so you can just watch it right on that page. Um, go full screen if you want. Uh, right below that, there may be a discussion, an online discussion, something that you need to, to post and then reply to somebody else. Below that, there might be um, a quiz. Maybe below that there's a lab that you need to do. Maybe this particular week you don't have any of that stuff. It's a, a, a week that we're doing a practical exam. Whatever it is you need to do, it's all going to be in that folder. Um, now when you read this week's, or when you watch this week's uh, lecture video, which is all about the syllabus, you're going to figure out my late policy. Uh, but just so you know, when you click on weekly content, you're only going to see, at most, two folders. Um, this week you're just going to see the week one folder because there is no last week. Uh, but then next week you're going to see week two and week one folders. Um, and that's because I expect you to do all of the work for a week in the week in which it's due. So weeks for me go from Monday to Sunday. Uh, and so everything for week one you should have done by this upcoming Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Right? So Monday through Sunday, get everything done for week one, done in week one. Now, if for some reason you can't do that, right? Um, life happens. Uh, you get sick. Uh, you need to go out of town for a funeral, um, business trip. Who knows, right? We all have sort of busy lives. Um, so if you need to do something and you just can't get around to your work, you have a one-week grace period. One week where you can turn in assignments, there's no penalty for turning them in late. Again, this is covered in the syllabus video, so you'll hear more about it there. But the idea is um, you've got a lot of flexibility. You can, if you need to, say, you know what, I just really can't get to this right now. I'm going to wait till next week. I'll just, you know, kind of do two weeks worth of work next week to catch up. That's great. So um, in the weekly content section, you'll always see the current week and the past week. So if it's week four, you're going to see the week four folder and you're also going to see the week three folder because you can turn in anything for week three that you know is there and you'll receive no penalty for it. Um, however, you won't see the week two folder. The week two folders already disappeared. All those assignments have expired and if you haven't done something you'll get a zero for it. So there's a lot of flexibility but with some hard deadlines. Um, and if you want to know why I do it that way, philosophy, it's all in the 
uh, syllabus overview video, which is your week one lecture video. Uh, and we'll get more to that when I tell you what we have to do this week. But that's the weekly content section in Blackboard. All right, now the next few links you're going to see on the left-hand side are all just convenience links. One is a link to My IT Lab. It'll take you straight to the login page so you can get there very quickly, very easily. Um, and so it's there for your convenience. However, it doesn't do you any good here in week one because you don't have a My IT Lab account to sign in with. Um, setting up your account will be one of the week one assignments. It's in the week one folder, as well as a link to just myitlab.com where you can actually register your account. So that link is really more for later to allow you to more quickly get to My IT Lab. Um, below that, you're going to see links for uh, the syllabus, which will include um, the syllabus overview video, as well as a copy of the syllabus, some personal information so you can get into contact with me. Um, you'll also find uh, a link to support services for students, uh, student support. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of different groups and people that are there to help support you as an online learner um, at Fresno City College, and so I've added that link so that you can find a quick and easy way to get to all of those different resources. Um, there's actually some really good, you'll see it's actually step five of several uh, for online learning. Um, so there's a lot of good resources there on the FCC website. I know our website's kind of hard to find stuff, but uh, it's all there very nicely laid out. So that will take you to the student support section since you're obviously already enrolled in an online class. Um, you're kind of a little further on down the line. But if you need help, uh, there's a lot of stuff there to help you. Um, other than that, uh, there's also a link to discussion boards. Your, a link, there'll be a link to the discussion board for the specific week uh, in each of the weekly content folders, so you don't have to deal with it. Uh, that link is really just there in case you want to go back and say, oh, you know, I was talking with somebody in week three about something, uh, and I kind of want to go back and look at that discussion again. That link's there so it can take you directly to, the, uh, to that discussion since, you know, maybe it's week seven, and that week three link in the weekly content folder is completely gone. Um, so it's a quick way of getting to discussions. But again, everything you need to access, you can access directly from the weekly content folders. Um, so you don't really have to go playing with those a ton. Again, it's a quick way to get you where you want to go um, if you kind of know where it is you want to go. And the last link you'll see there at the very bottom is my grade. Um, that link will take you to the grade book where you can see your grade, see how well you're doing in the course. Um, I'll try to have grades up to date, at least within the last couple weeks. Um, as stuff disappears, uh, I generally don't grade anything until it's disappeared and no longer available to students because you, you may still be changing. You may take that quiz again um, and get a better score, who knows. Uh, so there'll, there'll be stuff there. I have to manually move stuff over from my IT lab into uh, Blackboard, so there'll be a little bit of delay with that. Um, quiz scores, though, get automatically updated, so if you want to see how a, taking a quiz maybe changes your grade, um, you'll see that stuff instantly. But regardless, uh, that's the place to check out your grade. I suggest you do it often. Um, it's always good to know where you stand, um, and it also will help you to kind of see what's coming up. All the columns are already there, so um, you'll kind of know where you are in the class and how well you're doing. Um, so check your grade often. It's a good idea. That's why I put the link there. All right, so now that we're done with the tour, um, let's talk about week one, the week that we're in. What do you need to do to succeed in week one? Um, well, click on the weekly content link, go to the week one folder, it'll be the only folder you see, and once you're there, you'll see in order all the things you need to do this week in order to succeed. Um, think of it like a checklist. The very first thing you need to do is the reading for this week. The reading for this week is the syllabus, and so you'll see a link to the syllabus there. You click it, download it as a PDF, um, and you can check it out. Or better yet, just have it up or print it out if you want to. If you're old school like that. Um, and then watch this week's lecture video. This week's lecture video is unfortunately a little bit long. I do apologize, uh, but it's covering the syllabus. And so uh, because I want everything to be crystal clear and because that video is always available under the syllabus link on the left, um, it's something you can go back to later if you ever need a better explanation of something. Um, wait, how, how, does, how does the practical exam affect my grade? You can go to the assignments and grading section of the video um, at any point during the semester. So it's, it's a long video, it's also sort of a reference video. Uh, but take a look at it, it will explain hopefully every question you could possibly have about the course. Um, yeah, 
check out the, the syllabus overview video. Uh, it's your weekly lecture under there. I think it's about a half an hour long, uh, which is actually still half of my old lectures um, for these online courses. So you're still better off than past students, but um, normally a lecture video will be anywhere between you know, eight and 15 minutes. Um, I try to keep them short, um, and then you may have some weeks where there's actually multiple lecture videos. Those lecture videos will not only cover what's in the textbook, but it'll also cover sort of what I think is important that's not in the textbook. Um, and so some more practical information. Anyway, this week, it's just overviewing the syllabus. So uh, check that out, even though it's kind of a long video. Then after that, you've got a discussion. Your discussion for this week is just to introduce yourself. Um, to be honest, this week it's going to be more about just learning how to use that system. Um, how do I create a thread? I mean, there's a big button that says create thread, but you haven't done it yet. You don't know where that button is. And so going through that process this first time, um, where you don't really have to think about the content, I mean, you know yourself pretty well. I'm pretty sure you could write an introduction to your, about yourself uh, pretty easily. Um, but it sort of serves that function of learning how to use the, the system. Um, not only do you have to make a post about yourself, you also have to reply to somebody else's post. So you're gonna have to you know, read through the class's posts and say, hey, this person, you know, I've got some stuff in common with them, why don't I reply to them? Um, and say, hey, you know, I also work at a hospital or whatever it is that you, know, you have in common. Um, have a little bit of a discussion, try to continue the conversation. Um, you have to make at least one reply, that's part of your grade, um, it represents about a third of your discussion grade, but you, know, you can reply as many times as you want. You can be friendly, that's acceptable. Um, one of the nice things about this particular week's discussion is that it's also just introducing yourself, it's very personal, and there's not a whole lot of, it's not meant to sort of, I want to get your information about something or I want to get a response to a particular topic. Um, and so it can just be friendly. Um, we don't have a whole lot of opportunities in an online course to create a sense of community, uh, to create a sense of connection between people. And so this is kind of one of the few ways in which we can do it. And so as much as you can make it as warm and human as possible, I encourage you to do it. Uh, if you're comfortable uploading a photo of yourself, a lot of times people kind of like to know, oh yeah, this is the person I'm talking to. Um, otherwise, you know, online classes can be kind of cold um, and unhuman. So anyway, if you're comfortable sharing a photo of yourself, share a photo of yourself, maybe doing something that you love. Um, there'll be another opportunity to do that later on, I think in like week six or something, but um, regardless, try and be warm and friendly um, and get used to the idea of, oh yeah, this is how I make my initial thread uh, with my initial post, and then here's how I re respond to somebody else, and then next week you're actually going to do it about a topic involving technology in the class. Uh, but this week, just introduce yourself. Um, and there's a prompt in the week one folder with some questions that you can answer, um, like, how do you feel about technology? Uh, is there anything that you do with technology that's particularly cool? Maybe you upload videos to YouTube. Maybe you uh, create digital music. Um, maybe you just you know, share photos and Skype with relatives that live far away. Um, whatever you do with technology that you consider to be cool, share it with us. We'd like to know. Um, so anyway, that's the discussion for this week. And then uh, a very, very big thing that's actually fairly simple to do. Uh, is creating your My IT Lab account. So half of this course is all about computer concepts. Um, it'll be straight out of the textbook. You'll have to learn about how computers work and what we do with them and stuff like that. The other half is very practical. It's using Microsoft Office, um, specifically for this class, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Um, we'll also hopefully have a Windows lab at the very end of the semester. I put it at the very end uh, because it's brand new. They're just creating the simulation and I'm only, I'm hoping it will be ready by the end of the semester for us. But it's all on Windows 10, which is the brand new Windows that's coming out. And so I'd like for you to have a little bit of experience with that. Um, regardless, there's the practical lab stuff. All of that practical lab stuff happens in a, in a product called My IT Lab. There's more information about it in the uh, syllabus overview video, but you need to create an account. 
Um, there are two ways of purchasing my IT lab access. One is to do it the old fashioned way. Go to the bookstore. If you go to the bookstore, you will see a package. It will have a paper book along with a fancy card that's sort of all wrapped together in shrink wrap. Um, the fancy card has inside of it an access code that you can use when registering for my IT lab um, and it will you've already paid for your access and it will allow you into the system all right so that's the first way and that way you get a paper book um, I haven't actually checked the bookstore I think it's going to be about hundred and fifteen dollars for that package uh, at the bookstore so if that's the way you want to go do it it's great um, I know a lot of students actually do prefer a paper text um, and so you know you pay a little bit more for that but it's good the other way to do this is you don't actually need that paper textbook. The paper textbook is irrelevant. Um, there is a digital copy, whether you get the paper one or not, you're going to get access to a digital copy of the textbook in My IT Lab. So all you need is My IT Lab. You don't need the paper book. Um, if you purchase directly from Pearson using a credit or debit card, um, you can get My IT Lab access, the same as everybody else. Uh, for about 75 bucks. Uh, hopefully the price is the exact same. It may be plus or minus five dollars, but it should be around 75 bucks. So that's a savings of, you know, 35, 40 dollars, depending on what it is at the bookstore. Um, so it's a good savings. Um, if you want to do it, you won't, you won't get a paper book, but you will have access to a digital book. Now the digital book is really, really nice. When you're taking quizzes, it has a search field. Hopefully you've already thought, oh wait, I could totally see how I would use that for a quiz. I read the quiz question. The quiz question is about email servers or SMTP or something like that. So you, you know, copy SMTP, you paste it into the search field. You search the book for any instance of SMTP. You sort of say, well, I'm in chapter six or chapter seven or whatever chapter it is. So you find one from that chapter and it'll even give you a little preview of that paragraph that it found the word in. So you can hopefully click, go directly to the part of the textbook you need. Um, a lot of people would consider this to be cheating, but it's not cheating because all those tools are available to you. Um, in the world today, there is lots and lots of information out there. Learning how to search to find the information that you need is actually a really, really important skill. It's something that people who are computer literate already know how to do. Um, you know, you can kind of tease out what search words do you actually need to put into Google to get the exact, you know, responses you want that has the information you need. Um, anyway, I encourage it. Practice finding those appropriate search search key terms and putting them into uh, into search fields and getting the responses you need. Um, anyway. Digital texts allow you to make quizzes much, much easier. So if you prefer paper, do it. Bookstore, hundred and whatever dollars. If you don't care about that, you have an ebook. Just purchase directly from Pearson for 75. It'll be cheaper. I think it'll be better, but up to you. The process for both is very, very similar. And I have a video in the week one folder walking you through exactly what you need to do in order to set up your MyIT Lab account. Step by step, whether you have an access code from the bookstore, whether you're purchasing with credit or debit card, um, it's all there. Now there's a third option as well. It's a third option that will eventually lead to one of those other two options. But the third option is uh, Pearson will give you a 14 day free trial. So if you're planning on eventually uh, purchasing, you know, directly from Pearson or if you're planning on eventually getting a, an access code. You can get 14 days of access. Um, so let's say your financial aid just hasn't come in yet. No problem. If your financial aid has come in yet, just pay for it now. Don't let that money just slip out of your account and then you now no longer have the money to purchase it. Um, so if you've got your financial aid, then do it now. Uh, but if you need to wait a couple weeks, you've got a 14 day free trial. I'll show you in that video exactly how to do that um, and you have 14 days from that point you can continue doing coursework all you have to do is then just click on a link to pay for a full account before your 14 days are up and all your information will be you can just continue with the course like you had paid for it from day one um, all in the, under the same account you're good to go all right um, so I think that's it for week one I mean it's really just introducing yourself in an online discussion 
setting up your MIT lab account, that's effectively your lab for the week. Um, and then your reading and lecture are all around the syllabus and just learning how the class works. It's a, it's a soft launch, a, an easy roll into the course. And then in week two, we actually start the class in earnest. Um, and so you'll have assignments, uh, your first lab will be due, there'll be a, a legitimate discussion, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there'll be a chapter to read with a quiz, that sort of stuff. Um, this week, no quiz. We're just trying to get you into the class um, and doing well, all right? That's week one. Okay, so I know that this, this video has been a little bit longer, trust me. Once we get into the swing of things, once you've found your rhythm, um, these videos can get a lot shorter because I'm just telling you what you need to do that week, as well as answering questions. Speaking of which, if you have any questions about this course, feel free, feel free to email me, uh, Brian with an I, dot baker at FresnoCityCollege.edu. Uh, make sure you do IA, not AI. Uh, many, many people seem to email brain.baker at FresnoCityCollege.edu and then wonder why I never responded to them. So anyway, they should just create that email and forward it to me. It happens so often. Um, B-R-I-A-N dot baker at FresnoCityCollege.edu. Uh, email me. There are other ways of uh, contacting me. Those are in the syllabus video as well as on the syllabus themselves. Uh, you can actually text me using Google Voice. Um, all that stuff is available to you as a student in this class. But if you have any questions, contact me. If you have a question that is like really good and actually applies to the entire class, I may actually answer it in one of these videos. Um, so not just, you know, don't just think of it as questions of, oh, you know, do I know what I need to be doing right now? Uh, what about quiz two? I didn't see something. Those questions are, of course, welcome, uh, but also if you just have questions about the content itself, um, if you, you know, have a question about technology in general that you want to get a response to, um, tell me about it. Send me a question. Say, hey, I'm considering buying a smartphone. Uh, what do you think of the different brands of smartphones out there? Um, whereas I won't give you specific advice about a particular brand, I can tell you about the environment. I can tell you that there are only two companies that make money on smartphones and everybody else is losing money. Um, and that you might be better off with one of those two brands. But, uh, spoilers, they're Apple and Samsung. But other than that, you know, if, if you know the brand, if you know the product, we can talk about the differences between iOS and Android, whatever questions you might have, send them to me and I may answer them here in these videos, all right? Um, that being said, I'm here, I'm available. If you have any questions, email me. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the class. Uh, week one, like I said, it's a soft roll in. You're just preparing yourself for week two. So make sure you get in there and get prepared so that week two, you can hit the ground running. All right, uh, have a great day and I will see you online.